Hey, what's up, everybody? I am here, and we're starting something new. It's the year of kingdom expansion, and one of the yeah. ways I want to expand is to begin, drum roll, blah, 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 is our video podcast on my channel, Josiah Silva. And what I want to do is continue the message, and as our first guest, my very first guest ever, Pastor Obed Martinez. Come on, yo. Come give on, it up man. for Pastor oh, Obed man. Martinez. So honored to have you. Honored and, to be And, um, you know, Pastor Obed has been a voice in my life mm. for the past 15 years. You've helped expand my mind. I mean, you really have just spoken to areas I didn't see in myself. Mm -hmm. And so I'm honored to have you as my first guest. Yes. And uh, we just had an incredible time over at our Kingdom Come Nights. And mm. uh, you just, you dropped a word. Yeah. And so I want to continue the thought here and I'll do it like an interview style. Yeah. There's a lot of people that are connected, you know, um, to Freedom House, to myself, mm -hmm. also to you. But you talk tonight just about obedience and yeah. what that means going beyond our, just our, our normal sphere. Yeah. And just kind of summarize it. I, I love the statement you made about how what starts of obedience, we let it turn into sacrifice and how that multiplies in life. So just, just kind of break it down. Yeah, it kind of comes from that whole scripture in 1 Samuel when Saul really had a grace given on his life to accomplish something that the children of Israel had not been able to do. Yeah. And, um, and all of a sudden now, um, you know, Saul's gift uh, started with obedience. And, and, and then next thing you know, he, he doesn't obey God to the fullest, and then he wow. brings God yeah. like, you know, some cattle, and he spares the king in which God told him, no, with the Emelex, I want you to wipe them all out. Right. And he goes to Samuel, and he says, well, this was going to be a sacrifice <laughs> unto the Lord, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, really what's powerful about that statement, Pastor, is the fact that most believers, when they start something off in obedience, whether that's serving yeah, or whether serving. it's giving or whether it's our own prayer time yeah. or our own, you know, like reading the word, right? If, you know, they find themselves now saying, oh, it's a yeah. sacrifice. I, mm. It's a sacrifice. Like yeah. I, I, I've been having to sacrifice to do that. No, no, no. The truth is, is that when you first started doing it, it was yeah. out of your obedient heart. Mm. So, and now that obedience has turned into a sacrifice. I think that could be very detrimental especially to the grace that God gives you right. in order to conquer the giants that are in your life. So good. I love that word obedience because mm -hmm. I think, you know, we tend to, to look at it like, you know, out of feelings or, you know, like you said, it's a sacrifice. But the truth is when it's all said and done, mm -hmm. we got to be obedient to yeah. what God said. Yeah. And I love how, how you connected that, how when you obey God out of Deuteronomy chapter 28. Yeah how that obedience releases the blessing. Yeah. It releases, like, it is the covenant of God yes. that when you obey him, mm -hmm. you are going to succeed in every area of your life. Yeah. And this has been one of my passions. Like, one of my passions is I don't believe you have to sacrifice your success to be spiritual. Right. That that, God, that's so. That's such a great, great quote right there. Thank you. Where, where it's like... God, you can be both spiritual and successful. Yes. You don't have to sell your soul to the devil for success. No. Yes. Spiritual. And I love how you connected that. And so can you break that down a little more about yeah. how when you walk in that obedience as a business owner, as a person with goals, you know, as a person who wants to, to see see more. Like for us, it's a kingdom expansion. Yeah. How does that obeying God release that? Well, as I, 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 I you know, Deuteronomy 28 starts off with, you know, if you will obey my voice, right? Mm -hmm. So so when God says something like that, it lets us know that obedience doesn't begin with an action. It be first begins with the word, so right? Good. So, so my I, God. I, yeah. I have to hear it. Yeah, yeah. And so whatever I hear, I have to make a choice mm. whether I obey it, mm. right? You know, That's I mean, great. think about, you know, we're, we're dads, right? And we got, we got young sons. And, you know, how many times do we tell them, Hey, you need to take out the trash. Hey, you need to take out the yeah, trash. Yeah. And then you're like, and then finally you sit there and you go, hey, <laughs> Judah. And both of our sons are named Judah. Yeah, yeah, hey, yeah. Judah, I've told you five which times. By, which, which was by accident, by the way. Right, right, so right. I didn't know you before my son was right. born. Right, <laughs> which five yeah. times to take out the trash. Yeah, okay, yeah. dad, I'll do it, right? Right. What happened, if he would have heard it the first time, 
and responded, then that's the way it should be. It yeah. shouldn't be that God has to consistently tell us. Right. You know, I've been telling you this. I've been telling you this. And then yeah. you're not obeying. Well, then you wonder why you continue to get in trouble. Your cycle of sin continues yeah. mm. or your cycle of 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 of, so, of of the lifestyle that you have. So continues. you're talking about like a delayed obedience. Like I like what you said tonight. Partial obedience is complete disobedience. disobedience. Yeah. And we you better also, write that down. Partial obedience yes. is complete. And you said that. People have selective yeah. obedience. That's right there. That's, yeah. that's what it is. And right? so that selective oh. obedience is like, well, I'm going to obey what I want to feel and what I want, but I'm not going to obey this over here. So it's like, Break that I'm, down. Like, I'm going to obey God. I'm going to obey God One area. by saying, God, I, I'm going to pray mm -hmm. so that you open up the doors according to Colossians chapter 4, verse 3, yeah. that you will give me promotion according to Psalm 77. Okay, you obeyed God to pray and read your word and fast as you guys are going into your 21 days of prayer and fasting. Yeah. Well, then now when God does it, and he's like, all right, it's time for you to return the increase back to me. And you're like, oh, no, wait a minute. Well, that's selective right. obedience. Wow. We wow. obey what we, we, what we may want to, mm -hmm. but we don't obey to the fullness. And this is what wow. I tell people. You, you can't expect the fullness of God's blessing when you're only giving him partial obedience. My God. And so we, we just have... Let so, me we, say that again. You yeah, cannot you, expect... The fullness of God's blessing when you're just giving him partial obedience. So good. And so we want to make sure that God... I'm obeying you and I'm obeying your voice. And let me just say this to those of you that are watching, because this is powerful, right? Why would you not trust someone who's never lied, who's never led you wrong, mm -hmm. who's never overpromised and underdelivered, and has a consistent record mm -hmm. of what he said he will do, he does. How hard is it to <laughs> obey someone yeah. like that? Yeah, yeah. And I can understand when circumstances you know, put a lot of pressure on us. That's when we have to ask ourselves: Am I going to live by pressure, or am I going to live by principle? So and I want to make sure that yeah. I'm sticking to the principles of God and yeah. not making decisions based on pressure that will eventually lead me to a life of disobedience. So good. And why? Why do you think people give into that pressure? You work with a lot of high performance individuals, professionals at a high level. Huh. I know you don't really go around talking about it, but, you know, God's allowed you to be in some rooms with, like, true movers and shakers, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in the business realm. Mm -hmm. And why do you think some people give into that pressure? What, what, what do you think is some of those things that causes them to yeah, give into that? Yeah, I, I think it's two things. Number one, they start living for their status. Mm. And that's... Good. That's important, right? You know, when Jesus said in Luke 2.52, he says, you know, it says, and Jesus grew in wisdom, favor, and stature with man and with God. It didn't say Jesus grew with wisdom, favor, and status. <laughs> That's great. What That's happens good. is these people uh, get there because of their stature. Mm. And then what happens is, is that people are now seeing them more from their status than their stature. And when you say stature, you're talking about character, the character, right, 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 and what, and and so we have to be careful that our status doesn't overshadow wow. our stature. We want to make sure that people see our character mm -hmm. more than they see our status. So yeah. that's that's the pressure that comes along with yeah. uh, being successful, and sometimes allows these people mm -hmm. to fall uh, because of that. The second is is that. They believe now their lifestyle is dependent on what they do mm. rather than who they are. Wow. And, 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 and this is what I tell high achievers all the time. This is, this is a powerful thing, right? And that is that yeah. what you do yeah. should never, ever, ever determine who you are. Wow. Who you are is what gives you the ability mm. to do what you can do. Mm. Don't sit there and go, man, I'm making all this money. I'm doing all these great things because this is what I'm doing. No, the reason why you are able to do what you're doing is because God started to work a long time ago on your being. Right, right. So right. here's my being, it's who I am, and then it's the doing on what I do. Right. And when you start living for the doing yeah. and don't pay attention to your being, yeah. 
is when you land up giving your giving your life over to pressure rather yeah. than principle. Wow, you implode. You implode. I heard someone say, "We're not human doings; we are called human beings." Hundred <laughs> percent. That, know? That's a yeah. hot, that's exactly the truth. But we, we get and, and let's be honest, you know, because we want to be real talk here. Mm-hmm. It's easy to get caught up in the doing. Yes, it's easy to get caught up in my title. You know, even put our identity in our in sometimes the consistency of performance. And to me, I tell people that shows up when you when you have you know a low moment or we know business or anything. It's it's cyclical. There's yeah. cycles, yeah. right? There's the peak yeah. and the trough, the peak yeah. and the trough. You know, and there's always going to be moments in the trough. But if your identity is only in doing, yes, you won't know who you are in the trough. Yes, you won't know who you are in the low moments. Yes, but if you know, no, I know who my my source is. Yes, I, I like to say your resource never your source. Your yes. source. Is from God. Hundred percent. You said something tonight. Uh, I really want you. Again, we're zooming in here. I like when you said, "When we become, you know, prosperous, God starts blessing businesses or people. Our our source is not clients. Yeah. Break that down a little more. Like our source isn't isn't come from people. Yeah. Like you know that that's not our source. Yeah." Right, our source you started mentioning is in our obedience coming from God, and God releases that prosperity because we can give so much excellence to our clients, but we ain't giving that excellence to God. Yeah, I was I, I was having lunch a few months ago with an executive from Tesla, and he said something to me that was extraordinary. He said, at Tesla, when it comes to Elon Musk, he says everybody else's excellence should be our average. <laughs> that's great. Okay, so that's that good, yeah. that sets it apart, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, the reason why I start off with that is because we start off in business, we start off in life, we start off in marriage focusing on us. I need to get better. I need to make sure my life is a life of excellence. And right. then it just overflows into what I do. Wow. And then all of a sudden we begin to build and build and build and we build this healthy business and we spend more time working on the excellence of our company towards our customers and not focusing on the excellence that we should have giving to God. Wow. And so I'm always aware every morning going, God, my excellence coming from you should be the overflow of the excellence from to my clients and customers. When I start to pay attention more to the excellence of my clients and customers, like I'm giving them excellence, but I'm not giving God excellence. Wow. Yeah. Then I am saying they're my source so I and it. God, you're my resource. Wow. That's so when great. it should be, no God, you're my source and they're my resource. Because at the end of the day, yeah. God uses clients and customers as a portal to get what's in his hands into yours. <laughs> That's great. Okay, so if I want to focus on my source, yeah, yeah. then everything in my relationship with him should be at the highest excellence. And this is my measurable. I always ask myself this, am I giving people, my church, my business, congregational man, am I giving them more excellence of myself wow. than I am giving to God? So good. I want to make yeah. sure that order stays the way it should. That's great. And that just makes full circle to what you said, right? Mm-hmm. Obedience. Yes. Hearing the voice, obeying. Yes. And that releases the blessing, the prosperity, 100%. the kingdom expansion. There's nothing you have what, to do. What would you, what would you say to people? Because when you start talking about sometimes blessed and prosperity, of course, there's a whole section of people that right away turn it off. Are you one right. of those prosperity preachers? Right. Right. And it's, I always find that hilarious. Yeah. Like, there's, o- there's only one type of gospel, and that's the gospel that Jesus died on the cross. He rose again. And he ascended into heaven. There's only one gospel. When they talk yeah. about there's there is no such thing as prosperity gospel. No, there's, there's only one gospel, exist. right? Yeah. But I always say this: I'd rather have a prosperity message than a poverty message. Yes, hundred you know? percent. Know I mean? Yes. Like, what are you talking about? When I read God's word, God's word tells me that the Lord puts His blessing when you obey Him. Yes. But what would you say to someone? Because you know, not that we're trying to answer Nate Sanders, but I want to give people context. reason, context. Yeah. What would you say to someone that says, "Well, what about all that prosperity stuff?" You yeah. Know? What would you say that? Well, you know, first of all, the first thing I would say is that the most easiest thing you'll ever accomplish in life is to be poor. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. 
it's easy to be poor. Right. Um, you don't have to worry about bills and you don't have to worry about, mm. you know, um, you know, growing and, you know, establishing yourself, you know. So it, it's very easy. Um, it's very difficult to live a life of success, but yet it's promised Great to point. you. Joshua 1 says, I'll give you a life. And the Bible says, and you will make your ways prosperous. Wow. It doesn't say that he would. Mm. He says, you will make your ways prosperous and you will have good success. Wow. So Great. God attaches success to obeying, him. to obeying him and making our ways prosperous. Wow. Great. So I'm, I don't believe in, I don't believe that someone can, be, can have prosperity unless it is first resulted in their life being prosperous. Great. So what you have to realize is that prosperity is an overflow of, the, of your life being prosperous. That's great. So I always go, all prosper means, and I love what your theme is this year, kingdom in, 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 expansion, in, in, in expansion yeah. right? All prosperity is, is God enlarging your life bigger than what it was yesterday. That's great. And that's how I turn, God right? Enlarging so, your life bigger than when it was yesterday. So I look at my life. Yeah. I'm, I I want to be prosperous in love mm -hmm. so that my prosperity of love great. overflows into people's lives. <laughs> that's great. I want to be prosperous in yeah. peace so that my prosperity right. of peace overflows into people's life. The Bible does not describe prosperity always to money. Or things. Or things. Yeah. It, it always applies to your spirit. Your soul. Yeah. Your soul, Mind. your nature, yeah. who you are as a believer. So I want to be prosperous in love, mm. right? So that I have love, prosperity of love that overflows yeah. to my children, right. to my wife, yeah. to my congregation, to people around, the, you know, people that I'm, I'm around. Yeah. So I think people just have a... That when they when they say well the prosperity gospel first of all there's no such thing as that yeah. <laughs> secondly is yeah. is they struggle with what real prosperity is because right. what they've been told is what prosperity isn't wow that's great and yeah. what they say is well Jesus was poor and Jesus struggled and all yeah. these type of things and I can give you all kinds of truth behind that 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 would, that would contradict that right but at the end of yeah, the day Luke, Luke eight one says that uh, Susanna who was the treasurer. Right, for Jesus. Yeah. He followed Jesus. She was a businesswoman. He had he a treasure. Jesus. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, I mean, his robe was seamless. The only people in those days that wore seamless robes were kings. Why would they gamble <laughs> for his robe at the, at the foot of the cross? Right, right. Here's a man that's dying. I mean, he's yeah. dripping in blood, and the people are down on the cross gambling. Yeah. They're trying to get, get, a, get a hold of his garment. Why right. did they get the hold of anybody else's garment? Because his <laughs> garment was seamless. <laughs> only yeah. the wealthy people had those. Wow. So... It was blessing on that. It was a blessing yeah, on totally, it, right? Absolutely. So, yeah. so again, it goes back to often what we're told about prosperity was what prosperity isn't. That right. you can't, like what you said, you can't be spiritual and successful at the same time. Right, right. We think we and that's not we that's not the Lord's will. Number one, that's not biblical, and I think yeah. it's just the opposite of diligence. Yes. Right. The Bible says that a diligent hand will prosper. Yeah. But a lazy hand will come to poverty. Hundred percent. And so, to me, you know, and I just want to answer this because when you start hearing this type of teaching, so then right away people say, oh, I don't know about all that, you know. No, listen, it's God's word, but I, I love, I want to go back to it, how you tied it to obedience. Yes. That is what I want you to take away from this yes. podcast, that it starts with obeying God's voice. Yes. Receive, like how you said, first you got to receive it. Yep. Because if, if you reject the, the word, yes. then you can't, then it stops right there, right? Yes. You got to receive it. You got to believe it. Yeah. Then you act upon it and yep. obey it. And you obey it. And it comes, but it comes from that. And the truth is we all know that prosperity is in things because right. you can have things but still be impoverished in your soul. Oh, 100%. How many people do we know that have things and that are but are poor in, in their relationships, soul? In relationships, In relationships, their marriage. Mind, <laughs> marriage. Yeah. And so, you know, yes, you, you can have... Uh, riches, but you don't have prosperity because yes. that is in the soul. Yes. And as believers, God says when we follow His word, we are we are prosperous. And from what yeah, from what I'm hearing you saying is from the overflow of our soul, yes, our mind, our will, our emotions. From there, you cannot stop the overflow of God no, in your hundred percent. You you cannot stop the magnitude of God's power when it's flowing through your life. You're going to be more creative. Yes. You're going to be more loving. You're, you're going to yes. be, be more clear-headed. 
You're going you're gonna to have more ability, disciplines. You're going to have the fruit of the Spirit, right? What's self-control. Yes. And so that is what we want you to leave with. But it all starts full circle again with obeying the Lord. Pastor Obed, thank you so much yeah, for your time. Any final, any final little something you have for someone? Yeah, I would just sit there and speak to all of you guys and just sit there and challenge yourself this year. This is what I did. I took some time in prayers. You guys begin your fast. And just take out a piece of paper or your notepad or your iPad, whatever it is, and just be honest with yourself and ask yourself this question. What are the areas in my life that I haven't been obedient in? And just write them down. That's great. Honesty and truthfulness, your, your life will be set free because of that. And when you start writing these things down, like, Lord, I haven't been obedient to your voice immediately. You've been telling me a couple of times I needed to do this. That, that was me. And so I wrote that down. And during my time of prayer and fasting, my wife and I did it in December, we said, I, that was one of my prayers. Lord, help me to obey you the first time you speak to me. That's great. And so I'm going to challenge you to do that because when you write it down, you'll see it. Some of you may say, man, I haven't been obedient in this relationship. Man, I haven't been obedient in forgiving this person. Man, I haven't been obedient, man, in my giving. Man, I haven't been an obedient in going to church and honoring the Lord on the, on the Sabbath day. You know, all these things. And when you see it, let that become your prayer time. That's great. Lord, I give this to you. Father, I commit this to you. I want to be a person this year that lives in the fullness of your obedience mm. because I'm believing for the fullness of That's your great. blessings and God will do it in Jesus name. Amen. Thank Amen. you guys for watching. You know, I look forward to having more of these type of conversations. Thank Absolutely. you, Pastor Obed. What an honor, man. Being willing. Come, Come on, on now. We're breaking ground in here. In your studio. Come Let's on. Go. That's, a, <laughs> that's right. It. If you're wondering about this picture behind me, this was given to me on my 40th birthday. And uh, one of the guys at our church drew it. And it's mm. actually David. I'm getting ready to throw that rock his stone to take down Goliath. And I pray that that's exactly what we do. We take down modern day Goliaths. Let's go. And raise up some Davids that are both spiritual and successful. Because you know, go. David was a man after God's heart, yes, but he was sir. also a, a businessman. Yes, He's sir. also a role changer. I believe you're going to be like, for the ladies, you're at Davina. Come on. Love you. As always, <laughs> like and subscribe. Press the share button. Give, let, send this to somebody that you know needs it. We love you. We'll see you on the next one. Bye.